Before we begin a detailed examination on each of the specific phases of meiosis, the process that is used to produce sperm and eggs, we need to take a detailed look at how chromosomes are counted and look at two different ways to measure the number of chromosomes depending on which cell division process we are talking about. Let's first start with mitosis because we've already looked at it and this gives us a baseline about how most cells cells treat DNA reproduction. So remember that the goal of mitosis is to produce two identical daughter cells with a total of 46 chromosomes each, although again, more correctly known as having two sets of 23 chromosomes, 23 from your mother and 23 from your father. Now, because this is the case, we can classify the daughter cells produced during mitosis as what we call diploid. Uh, the di obviously meaning two, and ploid in reference to a word called ploidy, which is a measurement of how many chromosomes an individual cell has. Now, if we think about how sexual reproduction works, this clearly does not work if we want to also produce an offspring that has two sets of 23 chromosomes. So, therefore, each gamete, each sperm, and each egg is therefore only going to have 50% of the DNA of an adult human cell, meaning 23 individual chromosomes or one set of 23 chromosomes. Now, because gametes have half of the DNA that a fully grown adult human cell would have, we refer to them as haploid, which again literally means half of the chromosomes that exist in a diploid chromosome. Now the reason for this is relatively obvious when we think about how the process of fertilization happens. So in fertilization, this is where the chromosomes of a maternal sex cell, that being of course an egg, combine with the chromosomes of a paternal sex cell, that of course being the sperm, and when this occurs, the 23 chromosomes from the haploid sperm join with the 23 chromosomes of the haploid egg, producing the first occurrence where we actually have a diploid cell, which of course is what we call the zygote, and because of the fact that zygotes have both maternal and paternal sets of DNA from the mother and father respectively, zygotes are now diploid rather than haploid, because again, instead of a single set of 23 chromosomes, now they would have two sets. And this kind of sets the stage for how meiosis, that being gamete production, begins, although we need to investigate a key difference that occurs in S phase, uh, that being where the DNA is duplicated, and how meiosis differs in the separation of DNA uh, as opposed to mitosis. So just like with mitosis, we can begin meiosis by talking about interphase, which occurs basically identically to interphase in mitosis, in that firstly, we need the cell to grow large enough so that it has double the amount of cytoplasm double the amount of cell membrane, and double the amount of organelles in order to create two identical daughter cells, or at least that's what it would be in mitosis. In meiosis, obviously, the DNA is going to undergo a little bit of recombination, but we will get to that in the next video. Uh, likewise, because we are separating the DNA, in fact, this is even more important to do in meiosis, the key organelles responsible for separating the DNA, the centrosomes, need to become active and start producing the microtubule proteins, also known as the spindle fibers, in order to separate the DNA into two identical gametes. And 
as always, we, because we are producing duplicate cells, even if they are not identical duplicates, we need to duplicate the DNA within the cell that is eventually going to become two sperm and two eggs. So what this means is we need to take our maternal and paternal chromosomes and duplicate them, and therefore we effectively have 23 times 2 times two chromosomes. And this right here is easily the most confusing part when discussing the production of gametes. So let's talk exactly about what these two numbers actually mean. Firstly, when we see when we say 23 times 2, what we are referring to is the concept of ploidy, uh, i.e. whether the cell contains both the maternal chromosomes, the chromosomes from your mother, and the paternal chromosomes, the chromosomes from your father. So if we are diploid, like an adult human cell is, you would have both the maternal and the paternal sets. But of course, when we are producing sex cells, a sperm and an egg, we only need one of each chromosome. So either your maternal or your paternal chromosome, which again is randomly determined, but either way, you will only have one of the two of each of the 23 chromosomes that you would have. And depending on whether you have both the maternal and paternal, or only one of the two randomly chosen, chosen, this determines whether the cell is diploid having both or haploid having only one. Now the 23 times 2, the times 2 part after refers to something that we call the copy number. Let me just rewrite this more neatly. The copy number, and the copy number basically tells us exactly what this represents. It means how many copies of each chromosome do we have? And the copy number is determined during S phase because S phase is when the DNA of the cell is duplicated. If S phase has not occurred, that means that we would only have 23 times 2 times 1. We would only have one copy of the maternal and paternal chromosomes, but after S phase has occurred, when DNA is duplicated, this means that we will now have two copies of each, including both the maternal and paternal halves. So just for the visual learners among us, if we take a look at these sets of chromosomes here, we can see that because we have two of each chromosome, one of these chromosome pairs is going to be the paternal chromosome and the other is going to be the maternal chromosome. And if we call this chromosome one, chromosome two, chromosome three, we have both maternal and paternal chromosomes for each of them. So this organism would be diploid, whereas because we only have the paternal or the maternal, we don't know which one it is, but since we only have one, this would be a haploid cell because it only has one of the two versions of each individual chromosome. Now, if we contrast this with copy number, we can see that it's quite easy to see the difference as long as you know what you're looking for. For example, uh, if we say that this is chromosome number one here, we can clearly see that we have the paternal and the maternal versions of each of these chromosomes, but we only have one copy of each, meaning that S phase has not happened yet. If, however, S phase occurs and the DNA is duplicated, now we still have the paternal and the maternal chromosomes, but now we have two copies of each chromosome, and therefore, um, in this case, let me go back here, in this case, our copy number is 2 
rather than a copy number being one, because again, the DNA is duplicated. In the next video, it's very important that you're able to distinguish between ploidy, is a cell haploid or is a cell diploid, and copy number, whether a cell has duplicated its DNA or whether it only has one copy of each chromosome, because in the next video, we're going to be taking a deep dive at each of the individual phases of meiosis, paying strict attention to when the cells go from being diploid and when they become haploid and can therefore function as gametes.